Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the iFlat Bumblebee, a well-built oversized ducted CineWoop, which is mainly designed for capturing cinematic shots using a GoPro action camera. In this video, I'm going to quickly go over its features and specs, show you how to set it up, and then show you some cinematic flight footage. The iFlat Bumblebee is available in a couple of versions. You can choose between plug and play and buy and fly versions, which are available with multiple receiver options, between 4S and 6S versions, which differ in their motors, and also between the FPV version, which is the one I have, and the HD version, which comes with the DJI Air Unit digital video transmission system. In terms of packaging, inside the box, along with the Bumblebee, you can find some really nice stickers, a spare set of HSKRC 3045 propellers, in addition to the one which is already pre-installed on the quadcopter, two plastic antenna tubes, a spare high-quality battery velcro strap, a noise control board for configuring the Cadix Rotel camera, a spare anti-skid battery sticker, a bag with plenty of extra screws, and a 90 degrees micro USB extension adapter. You should note that an action camera 3D printed TPU mount is not included, and if you need one, you need to purchase it separately. In terms of components, the Bumblebee is using the iFlight Zing 1507, 3600 or 2800 kV motors. On the front of the quadcopter, well protected by the frame and mounted using these 3D printed TPU parts, you can find the Cadix Rotel micro-sized FPV camera. On the center of the quadcopter, you can find a 20x20mm stack, which is based on a 4-in-1 BL32 40A EC, an F4 flight controller, which came pre-flashed with Betaflight 4.04, and a 48 channels VTX that supports IRC HRAM protocol, has a selectable output strength of 25, 100, 200, 400, and 500 millivolts, and features an AMCX antenna connector. A 50 volts, 220 microfarad capacitor is pre soldered to the battery pads, and in case you are getting the DJI version, the analog VTX is going to be replaced by the air unit. In addition, the FPV version of the Bumblebee is bundled with a stubby omnidirectional RCP antenna, which is using an SMA antenna connector. And on the back of the quadcopter, you can find 3D printed TPU parts that will enable you to secure your radio receiver, M6 to SMA antenna connector, TBS immortal antenna, and also antenna tubes for 2.4 GHz radio receivers. As for the Bumblebee frame, it features ducted propeller guards that are designed to increase the efficiency of the motors. Since the Bumblebee is designed to be flown mainly indoors, on the exterior of the frame you can find thick pieces of foam that also secure the ducted propeller guards. The wheelbase of the frame is 142mm. The distance between the back motors and the front ones is 92mm. And the distance between the right motors and the left ones is 107mm, so this frame features a squash X pattern. In addition, the thickness of the top and bottom unibody plates is 2mm. The width at their narrowest point is about 4.3 mm, and the thickness of the ducted propeller guards is 2.2 mm. As you would probably expect, the Bumblebee is not very light, and it weighs 278.8 grams, not including a battery. Including a 1500 mAh 4S Lipa battery, it weighs 460.1 grams, and including an 850 mAh 4S Lipa battery, it weighs 389.4 grams. The weight of the GoPro Hero 7 mount that I used in this video is 12.2 grams. So the total up weight, including the GoPro 7 camera and a 1500 mAh 4S battery is 587.7 grams. And including an 850 mAh 4S type of battery, the total weight is 516.8 grams. Setting up the iFlight Bumblebee is pretty simple. First, in case you have the plug and play version, you will need to remove the top plate and install the ready receiver and solder it to the flight controller. In case you have the buy and fly version, the receiver is going to be pre-installed and pre-configured by iFlight. On both cases, you will need to bind your radio transmitter with the radio receiver, and since the micro USB port of the flight controller is blocked by the frame, iFlight provided you with this 90 degrees USB extension board, and I recommend to be extra careful when connecting this board to the flight controller, since if you're going to press it too hard, you might break the USB connector of the flight controller, and trust me, it's going to be very hard to resolder it back. After testing out the Bumblebee, I can tell you that first of all, I'm really impressed with its build quality, and also with iFlight's attention to details, which includes these motor wires protectors, and also these 3D printed TPU parts, which protect the bottom of the quadcopter. 
In terms of light performance, I can tell you that this is a very stable platform for carrying a GoPro camera, so it serves its purpose. And if you are going to fly the Bumblebee outdoors, I recommend to use a 1500mAh for its battery, which should provide you with between 4 to 5 minutes of flight time, including the GoPro 7 camera, so it's pretty good. And if you are going to fly it indoors, I recommend to use a smaller battery, since the 1500mAh battery is too heavy and it's going to be hard for you to control the quadcopter, or at least it was harder for me, so using a smaller battery will make it a little bit more agile, but of course it will dramatically decrease the flight time, so using this battery you can expect between 1.5 to 2.5 minutes of flight time. In addition to testing the Bumblebee with the GoPro camera, I also tested it without it using this smaller battery in order to test its acrobatic performance, and I can tell you that due to its size and also weight, it didn't excel in this field, so if you're a beginner who's looking in this quadcopter and think it's going to be a good trainer due to its propeller guards, I don't suggest getting it for this purpose, and I recommend to check other options. You should also note that due to the ducted propeller guards, the Bumblebee can get very very loud, which is something that you should consider when flying it indoors, and in addition, even though it does feature propeller guards, the propellers are still exposed, so you should be extremely careful when flying it next to people, and preferably even avoid it. So overall, if you're looking for a good 3-inch Cinemoop for capturing cinematic shots using your GoPro camera, you should definitely consider getting the Bumblebee, and I'm going to wrap up this video with some cinematic shots, which hopefully are going to help you to make up your mind whether you want to get it or not. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos, and goodbye.